Alright, g'day guys, Matt Preston built Prada. Welcome to another video. Today's video is a buyer's guide on a Prada 90 series and what you should look out for if you're trying to buy one yourself. Okay guys, I've had this car for six years now and I've had my fair shares of ups and downs with it. So I'm excited to show you my knowledge and my input of what I think is a good part of 90 series and the common issues you're gonna look out for. Okay, so everything I mentioned in this video, I'm gonna have it time stamped in the bottom so you can just fast forward to the section you're interested in, for example, our board joints or the interior. So you can really quickly find out what you're looking for when you're trying to buy one of these from someone and you don't know if you can trust them or not. So let's get into it. Lower ball joints. Very common issue for these cars, probably the most popular issue of the whole entire car. When you think of a Prada 90, people will first think of their ball joints. Now, they're really easy to check and they're not that hard to replace. And I've got videos on all that on my channel, which I have links in the description. But they're also really cheap as well. You can get them off eBay, non-genuine ones, but for about 80 bucks on average, okay? Or you can get the like Toyota ones, which would be like, you know, 250 round, quite expensive. Now, I've had eBay ones in this and one of them did squeak after about a year and I just put new ones in um, and they've been fine. So they haven't broke, like break, but they're just a bit squeaky sometimes. Now worst case scenario, they did break. It's not that scary of a thing. All that happens is the, the wheel collapses in itself. Now that sounds quite bad, but I'll, I'll show some photos of it now. But pretty much the wheel will just collapse in itself and you'll come to a halt. And then obviously you're gonna pay for a tow truck get to the, your house and then fix it. And you might have broken other things within the accident. But if you replace it, just preemptively, check them once a year at least, um, you're talking 80 bucks. Do it yourself really easy. So highly recommend doing that yourself and something to look out for when you're buying one of these, okay? Lower ball joints. So the interior. Now, these two interiors are actually very durable and they'll actually last the test of time, okay? So unlike Patrol Series 4, um, they've got this leather and it gets all bubbly and sun damaged. Now, this car is the oldest car of its year. This is 1996, okay? Now, this has had a hard life and I can assure you that the top of this plastic here in the dash is, is fine, okay? So, the only downsides to these interiors is it does get a little bit rattly and shaky. If you're on going on um, gravel roads in the outback and heaps of sort of bumps, um, the dash does vibrate quite a lot. And once this handle actually vibrated off, um, but luckily you just open this, two screws, and it's back on. So it does all go together pretty simply. Um, but that is probably one of the little downsides. It does get quite rattly uh, on those really bumpy roads. And some of the aircon little vent black slits here have broken. Um, but that's just your common wear and tear. But in terms of sun damage, um, it doesn't get any. And I will also mention this part of the dash here is very common for failing. So you can see that this is meant to be pushed up into there the little plastic tabs ripped off. Um, that is a very common issue. You can get a zip tie around that. You can see the steering wheel here, despite being in the sun, it's actually not that damaged at all. Um, I know people put covers on steering wheels, but I don't like the thickness of it. This is just a nice size steering wheel here. Um, it's a little bit like grubby, and it's got a few little tiny cracks here, as you can see, but it's actually super comfortable and you can't even feel that. So I've got to say for 1996, it's held up really well. Okay, now I've got to say, out of everything in this car, the engine is one of the strong points. You've heard me say countless times, but this is the 3.4 litre 5VZ FE, the petrol motor. Now these are an absolute bulletproof little motor here. They cram a lot of, you know, V6 power into a tiny engine bay. It's not like a 105 series cruiser where there's room to play with, or the old Hiluxes. It is, it is quite tight in here, okay? Um, now my car actually has the body lift, so the engine's actually a little, it's two inches lower than what your engine probably is at home if you have one of these. Um, but things to look out for are you just sort of common maintenance, general knowledge stuff. Any REA person would probably check these out. Um, but gasket issues, um, you know, the kilometers on the motor, hasn't been serviced, color of the engine oil, all those common things. Now, obviously, if you go through your air filters, um, you can tell, you know, especially uh, with inside the body panels, you know, if it's got red dust in there, you know, has it been off-road a lot? Has it traveled through Australia? So how much wear and tear has actually happened to this car? Um, now my car did have red dust, so it actually has been a farm life, which is, you know, not great. Um, but if you get a Prado that is fairly stock, never been off-road, um, they're gonna be pushing half a million Ks, no worries. 
Um, one of my mates has a blue 9 Series Prado petrol manual and it's uh, up to 550 kilometers, okay? Um, and I think he's just redone the gearbox. So they do go the distance um, if you take care of them and they're well maintained. Um, I know the diesel 1KZ motor is also a really good motor, um, but the 5 uz FE petrol in these, more of them are sold, they're more popular, um, and they push bigger numbers uh, in kilowatts, okay? So very solid motor, just look for general maintenance issues, and you should be pretty good trying to get one for yourself. Now remember, these cars are full-time all-wheel drive, so you've got the wheels spinning all the time, it does use more fuel, but it doesn't mean don't check your diff lock gauge and make sure it works. So we'll show you how to do that. Okay, now this one's pretty obvious, but you wanna make sure that the center locking diff does work, okay? So mine's an older Prado, 1996, so for mine to engage, I need to put it in neutral and then slide this fully up and back into drive, and then it will come up here. But I know that some of the high-end Prados down here, they will have a little switch on this side, and you literally spin it and it engages the diff lock. But I've got the old dial dash here, I don't have the um, ink looking one. So this is the older Prado, and if you have one, you just want to make sure you're chucking this in neutral and pulling this fully up and engaging full drive. And there should be a little uh, gauge coming up here. And if you ever want to know how to disengage it, it's very unusual, but if you pause the screen and read that, you'll know exactly what to do. Because sometimes it doesn't work and they emit this in this description, and you have to actually put it in reverse and then forward again and drive and then reverse and you're gonna try and get out that way. So it's a bit of a gimmick, but it does work and just make sure your full drive does work. All right, the next category is signs of abuse. Now there's obvious things like your suspension bushes, uh, engine, interior, but I wanna go a little bit further, okay? I'm talking even little bits like here, like rust. Has it been in the beach? Has it had a beach life? Rust on the rails, that sort of stuff. So this car is a bit of a different scenario because it has been off road a lot. So it's probably, you're not gonna be buying one kind of like this. You're probably buying a stock Prado and then more likely, hasn't been off road that much, which is a win. So it will last the distance on the body. So if you have a GXL model, pretty much any of the models besides the RV6, you'll have these plastic flares, okay? Now, they are plastic, which is great in the sense that when bushes go past them or mud, um, it doesn't damage the metal paintwork up here. And there's been heaps of times where bushes have scrubbed this area, but not the doors, where the glossy paint is, which is a really good feature, because um, obviously protects you off-road. Um, but the downside is these are held on by plastic little like plug things that go into the panel and plastic does fail over years, okay? Now, I'll show you on camera, but this whole piece down here has actually come off full driving um, because of the clip failure, okay? So, and some people actually get these, take them off, patch all the holes and almost convert it to an RV6 model, which which is fine, but you do lose about that, that flare for your tyres, so you can't have an offset on your tyres at all. As right now, I've got negative 22 wheels and it fits within the guard just. So, something to look out for is plastic clips on the flares as well, which is a common thing to let go. Okay, another thing to look out for is the boot locking mechanism, okay? Now, as you know, the spare tyre sits on the rear boot. So, when you're um, closing and opening the door, you've got all this extra weight. Now, in this circumstance, the 35 inch mud terrain tire. So it's probably the heaviest tire you're gonna have on there. Now you might have a bag on the boot as well. Um, you might have a bar table as well like this. So when you're opening and closing that door, all that extra weight is all in this mechanism in here. Now, what does that mean? When you close the, the boot here, it's actually sagged over the, over the years of having that weight on there. So it doesn't quite close properly. Now, there are ways to fix this. You can put washers down in here behind the screws and it lifts the boot up and it closes good. But just to look out for, if you're trying to buy one of these, maybe just grab the boot, have a look at the latch where it aligns and just make sure that it closes right. Because even with mine now, I'm having to sort of just lift it up ever so slightly and then close it just to help it out a bit because you kind of don't want to like flog the mechanism in there, okay? Because all this weight is just supported by that one little latch. If that latch fails, this whole boot's just gonna fly open, okay? so. It is quite serious. Um, when I bought my car, it wasn't an issue because I got my car stock and it just had a normal tire on the back, like a 31, and it didn't seem to be much weight. But I know that since having this mods on that, it has started to weigh down a bit. So something to look forward, to look out for. If you are buying a Prada 90 that's got a few mods on it, has got off-road, has it had overweight on the back door. So make sure you have a look at that. Okay guys, they're my top things to look out for when you're buying one of these cars. 
Um, obviously, key things at the end of the day, engines are sweet, low ball joints are sweet, and no evidence that's been throttled or off-road, and you should be pretty good. But if you want to get into details, that's just my little list of things to look out for with these cars and their problems over my, you know, six years of owning one of these. Way longer than I thought, I swear it's only been like four with six years. So, super stoked with it though, have no regrets, and um, yeah, they're a good, reliable, full driving. If you're buying one, you should be all good. So, that's the uh, recommendation, guys. I uh, hope you enjoy the video, and if you need any help on those things I talked about in the video, I've links in the description of, because most of those mods or areas I have done work on already. So, heaps of other stuff on the channel, make sure you check it out, and I'll catch you guys next time on Build Prado.